Hi, this is Professor J.M.A. Chan at California State University, Long Beach. In this video, we will discuss the desirable way to view division. We must start by first understand the meaning of mathematizing. Well, mathematize is a verb that represents treating or regarding a subject in mathematical terms. For example, if Ari sleeps 50 minutes in the morning and 40 minutes in the afternoon, then the question to find out how much does Ari sleep can be mathematized by doing 50 plus 40, which gives us 90 minutes. The addition operation that's used here is the appropriate operation for this problem. Making these mathematical representations require an understanding of the four fundamental arithmetic operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. In general, we take addition to mean sum, and to find total, we use subtraction to take away things or to find the differences. We use division to find fair share or repeated subtraction. And in a separate video, we'll look at multiplication as a way to do repeated addition. In this video, we'll focus on division as a fair share or repeated subtraction. As in all math questions, there needs to be a context. Let's start with the context of the following question. If I have $12, then what would the expression 12 divided by 4 represent mathematically? Well, there are a suite of things that this expression could represent, but let's consider a few. For example, the expression 12 divided by 4 could be used to answer the question, how much does each person get when splitting $12 equally among four people? If I have $12, to split the money equally among four people, that means I have to take those $12 signs and group them so that in each group I have exactly the same number of dollars and I have four groups total. Well, the only way to do that is to group by elements of three. So that way we get four groups total and in each group I have three dollars. So the expression 12 divided by four, which turned out to be three, means that every person gets $3 when split $12 equally among four people. Alternatively, 12 divided by 4 could also be the mathematical representation to a different question, such as this one. How many groups of 4 are there in 12? To show our versatility of representation, we don't, we don't always have to represent everything linearly. We could start with, say, four little boxes and just add on another set of four and another set of four. So if you count the number of boxes here, you have three sets of four, which is exactly 12 little boxes. Now the question says how many groups of four are there in 12? Now it shouldn't be so hard to see that there is one set of four or one group of four, and there's just another set of four and another set of four boxes. So there is a total of three sets of four in 12. That means the result of this division of 12 divided by 4 should be equal to 3, since there are 3 sets of 4. 3 sets of 4, which gives us 12. Now you can see that this will always be the case that the number that you get over here, which in this case is 3, times the number in the denominator of that fraction, which is 4, should always give you the number that is on top of that fraction, 12. In general, we use the expression some number a divided by number b to mean the number of b's in a. Let me give you another example for this. I can think of the expression 1.5 divided by 0 0.25 as asking how many 0 0.25s there are in 1.5. And of course, you can answer this question sim simply by carrying out the division process. But you can also answer this question visually on a real number line. For example, if you draw the real number line from 0 to 1, and we need a half extra to get to 1.5, then to figure out how many 0.25s there are, it's asking how many quarters there are between 0 and 1.5. So I can divide my number line between 0 and 1 into quarters. And you can label this, the first quarter is the 0.25, and then if you add another quarter from quarter, that gives you 0 0.5, and you add another quarter from 0 0.5, that lands at 0 0.75, and so on. 
And to answer the question how many 0 0.25s there are in 1.5, you simply count. So this, this is 1, there's 2, 3, 4, 5, and there are 6. So the answer to the expression 1.5 divided by 0 0.25 is equal to 6. And the way we interpret this is that there are 6 0 0.25s in 1.5. Now let me uh, add an arithmetic note here. When computing 1.5 divided by 0 0.25, it's actually more convenient to apply an appropriate operation to convert a problem into an equivalent problem. Uh, so for example, I can multiply a factor of 1, and there's different ways of writing factors of 1, right? Of course, you can write 100 over 100 with, to turn this problem into 150 divided by 25. Then the problem becomes asking how many 25s there are in 150. Well, the same rule applies if you look at the number line between 0 and 150, and here it would be 100, you would divide the, the intervals into quarters, but in this case, quarters of 100 is 25. So then you will have each counting unit of a 25. And just like before, the answer to this question is equal to 6. That means you have 6 25s in 150. Now, whether or not you want to do the questions it's originally presented as a 1.5 divided by 0 0.25, or convert this problem into something different, but equivalent, in this case, 150 divided by 25, depends on this context. You might be doing different calculation, but really you're answering the same question. But by understanding the meaning of division or operations in general, you're empowered by the ability to choose the correct representations whenever necessary. Therefore, the power of mathematics. To summarize this video, first, we discussed that division is the operation of fair share. We use the expression A divided by B to answer how many Bs there are in A. Now, second, this is kind of hinted but not explicitly spoken. You want to avoid seeing the expression A divided by B as a procedure to compute, but rather see it as a mathematization to represent a problem. Number three. We do mathematics because we care about a problem. So given the context, you might want to consider doing a similar problem by applying further operations, such as multiplying by a factor of 1, or to convert the problem into different units. Well, this concludes our discussion on division.